All right. Hey out there, everybody. Uh, glad to have you joining us today. We are uh, kicking up another one of these just kind of semi-random product coffee live streams just for the fun of it and uh, 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 get some cool folks on here to talk about some things that are going on in the world of product management. What uh, Today, we're going to be talking to Greg Kotikia of Sofion, CEO of Sofion, and we're going to be digging into this convergence of product management and innovation that we've been seeing and uh, and talk about how how the evolution of software is really ch changing the game. We're going to get really deep on that in just a couple minutes. Before we do that, though, a um, couple of things that we've got coming up over the next couple of weeks that you'll want to be interested in. On November 17th, we have got the 60-second business case workshop, uh, strategic prioritization for product leaders. And we have a framework that we're going to be uh, demonstrating and showing you how to build out for yourself a prioritization model that really leans heavily into the strategic side of your business. It's not just purely about feature and function and reach. It's about how does this, how, how do we prioritize the work that we can do to carry our product vision and our product strategy as well as our business strategy forward. It's going to be a great workshop. Uh, we'll give you more details about that in a little while as well. And then on Wednesday morning, this is totally free for you. We have a uh, communicating priorities session at Product Copy. It's going to be at 7.30 a.m. Eastern. Jerry Odenwelder, one of our really active uh, members and a product coach at C Prime, is going to be talking about the implications of how you build a conversation around your priorities, both with your team before you actually finish the prioritization, while you're doing prioritization, and then to your larger organization when you're communicating what you're doing, why, and how. It's going to be a great session, 7.30 a.m. on Wednesday. Head over to productcoffee.com and sign up for both of these things. But today, we're just going to kind of hang out with our, our good friend, Greg Katikia from Sofion, and we're going to talk about some of the changes and some of the opportunities that are presented for your career and your company when it comes to innovation converging with product management. So with that, I am going to welcome Greg to the stage. Let's see here. There we are, Jason. There we Greg. go. How are you today? Hey, Greg, how you doing? How's life in Hotlanta? It is not as hot as it has been. We had a really cold week last week. It's back up to some really nice weather today, though. So we got it about 70 right now. Yeah, well, it's great. And thanks for having me back here. And nice to see you. And uh, for those who are not as heavily involved in product coffee, you should be. And you've got great sessions and they happen weekly. Join up, join frequent, join. It's, it's tomorrow's election day. Just like election yep. day, vote early, vote often, join product coffee <laughs> early and then attend often, right? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. That's right. Thanks. I appreciate that. And you guys have been great supporters of everything that we're doing. So it's, it's, and we've had you come do a couple sessions at Product Coffee, but we just haven't had a chance to really sit down and, and have a conversation with everybody in the room or in the virtual room and talk about some of your thoughts and some of the things that you've seen through your time at Sofion and with some of the innovative work that you have been doing. So we just want to really kind of share with our audience today a little bit about what you've been learning over the last few years and what you've seen. But let's start off for those who don't know you a little bit. And, and talk about Greg and and, and kind of your journey into product management in the first place. So tell us a little bit about your backstory. Is this my shameless self-promotion portion of it this? It is. It is. <laughs> I, will, I will tell you, I'm going to go way back when dinosaurs roamed the earth, tell you a little bit of a story, only because it's formative to the trajectory of my career and to our subject uh -huh. today product management. So uh, I, I got a degree as, a, as an industrial engineer since I came from a family of engineers. My father being a civil engineer called me an imaginary engineer. And for those of us that are IEs, we all get that joke. Uh, anyways, I didn't want to be an engineer. I remember sitting on my fraternity uh, house roof, looking at my other uh, industrial engineering buddies going, what the heck am I going to do? And so I went into sales and for a few years, my mother cried for about six months and she got over it though. And then uh, what I found myself doing though was really interesting. I was one of those, I was the product manager's worst nightmare. I was that uh -huh. sales guy that called up product management and engineering and said, have we thought about putting this feature in the product? Why aren't we doing this? Why are we adding that? 
what I realized is that I got to stop doing the sales thing because, you know, you got to sell what's on the truck if you're going to be a great salesperson. And I thought I should be on that side of the world. I should be defining the strategy and what I call the what and other people call it that too, the what of the product. And so in those days you went to, uh, you, you had to get an MBA, you know, thank God those days are past us, but I got an MBA at night. <laughs> with, uh, I went into product management. The only people that would hire a, uh, a sales guy with an engineering degree with an MBA was, uh, was a startup. And that actually started my journey of being an entrepreneur. So the conversation yep. of being a, a go-to-market guy with a technical understanding and acumen that worked in startups has been the trajectory then for the next 30, 40 years of my career. And uh, I've been in about a dozen different startups or early stage small businesses. I've grown a few of them to, uh, or been a part of the teams that's grown them to over a billion dollars in valuation. Um, you know, I've had some uh, in the in the American lexicon uh, baseball. I've had some, I've had some singles. I've had some doubles. I've had some triples, and I've had some home runs. And as I always like to say, I've also had some wonderful learning experiences. And yeah. so, <laughs> you know, they all don't work out. So, um, and along the way, I've probably been involved in you know revamping, transforming, or introducing a hundred different products. I tried to do a count one time, but uh, I lost count somewhere along the line. I've done about 28 mergers and acquisitions that are of significant value, being over $50 million. Mm. I've been the CEO now. This is at Sopion. This is my fifth uh, uh, trip as a, uh, as, a, uh, as a CEO. And so for those of you in product management, I like to think of being a CEO is like being the product manager of the company. And, uh, and, and, you know, the, the, the company is your product, right? It's almost the same mm -hmm. game. Uh, and the last thing I'll tell you about my career, I did take a, a little, and Jason, you know this, I did take a, a little detour for a while, and it was a great detour into academia. I worked as mm -hmm. a, a executive in residence uh, in, uh, at the University of Pittsburgh, my beloved alma mater, uh, where I helped them with software digitalization of life sciences uh, research so that they could... Uh, be successful in licensing those. So I worked in the tech mm -hmm. transfer office there. More importantly for this group, this was a this was great fun. I got to be the what I call the product manager of the product management degree. So at Carnegie Mellon University, I got to help create, define, and launch the master's degree in product management. At the time, it was the first degree in product management. So for those of you out there that say you can't get a degree in product management, you sure can. <laughs> yes, you can. Yes, you can. And, and and Brad over there, who's kind of leading that program now, has been a good friend of Product Coffee as well. Uh, so you kind job. of laid a great let let a great foundation, and it's just kind of continued to grow. I know uh, Holly and I went up to uh, Pittsburgh uh, uh, last year and uh, took a look at the program there and got to meet with uh, some of the students there. And it's just an amazing program that uh, you help create. So thank you so much for doing that. Very rewarding, and when you see, um, and it's actually part of what I wanted to discuss when we talked about here today, uh, it was an eye-opening experience for, for me, um, seeing where we placed the graduates. Um, and by the way, for those listening, um, most of the folks that enter in that master's of product management degree are somewhere between 25 and 35 years old. Uh, they mm -hmm. have you know five to seven years work experience. Most of them because CMU makes it a requirement, but there are other universities now that have product management degrees where having a technical undergraduate is not a requirement. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I will always say this, and, I, and Brad and I, uh, Brad Ivan, who runs that, uh, you know, there are lots of great certification online courses, everything like that, that, that can serve people well if they can't take a year off and spend some big bucks getting a master's degree in product management. Uh, but, um, but for those that can, uh, what was fascinating is to see those students being placed not just at software vendors, but being placed at Home Depot, at Walmart, mm -hmm. uh, you know, at uh, at 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 um, Optum, which is a major healthcare organization. Yeah. Uh, you know, they're being placed at, at at organizations where you thought to yourself, "Wait a minute, what what the heck is a product manager doing at Home Depot?" Right? What, you know, <laughs> right? Don't they sell? Don't they sell hammers? <laughs> but that has been a huge evolution for Home Depot over the last uh, over the last several years. So you're absolutely right. It's it's been this kind of uh, seismic shift uh, in in how companies that are 
have thought about IT traditionally or have thought about physical products traditionally have started to kind of make these shifts into a more of a product management mindset. And that, I think that's a lot of what we want to talk about today. So, um, uh, you know, your background has been absolutely, you know, formative in the evolution of this craft that we call product management over the years. It's, you know, I remember 20 years ago when I got started yeah, in this career, we didn't even, the, the questions about product management were, what's a product management? Uh, what does that even mean? And I think some of us still even struggle to answer that from time to time. It's it, because it's such a complex, uh, such a complex career anyway. But what I'd love to do today is just kind of dig into some of the trends that you're seeing in that now, in, in the idea of product management now, because it's now an established profession. It's established strategic function within organizations. There are a lot of, you know, chief product officer is a very common title for companies to employ these days. And it's about more than just managing spreadsheets, a whole lot more than that. It's, there's, this is a really big space. So let's talk a little bit about some of the trends that you're seeing there. Before I do that, I want to I want to comment on your 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 uh, 20 years ago because that's it's so true. Um, many of the listeners here, or people that will view this later on, will know the name John Thompson. John was a very uh, successful IBM executive. Went on to lead Symantec. Uh, was there during uh, probably its most successful version of growth. And today is the chairman of the board of Microsoft. So. Uh, yep. You know, Tom Thompson is one incredible individual, but I'll never forget he acquired my uh, my company back 20 some years ago called Accent Technologies and Cybersecurity. And as part of that, we were doing our integration meetings and I went in to meet John. And, and, and one of the first things John said to me goes right to the heart of what you were saying, Jason. He looked at me and he said, you know, Greg, I don't know what product management does, but I know I need it. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, we've we've grown a long way in those days. Hey, so yes, we talk, have. Let's talk about trends. That's a great subject. So, yeah. And and before we do that, uh, hang on. I I meant to ask at the top of the at the top of the broadcast. I meant to say, you know, we got we got a bunch of people out there watching on YouTube and LinkedIn, and I think we got a few people out there on uh, X as well as maybe Facebook. So I would love it if you would, while we're talking, drop it, drop a hello in the chat. Let everybody know you're there. Say hello. We'll give you a. a we, we'd love to hear from you. And if you have questions along the way that you want to hear Greg talk about or uh, hear us talk about, uh, drop them in the chat as well. We'd love to kind of address those as well. So now, Greg. Take it away. Yeah. Hey, thank you, Jason. And that makes this a lot more interesting this, than the two of us just chatting with each other. So yeah. thank you. Hey, so one of the things that, you know, I've seen both at uh, my days at CMU, um, look, I'm a, as you could hear, I was a long time product manager. I was there. I had one guy even early in my career, another fun story was he said, hey, Greg, product managers where we put our failed engineers and our failed salespeople that we still like. So that, you know, we've come a long way since those days too. Anyways, um, look, what is happening in product management is explosive. It's incredible. Um, you mentioned something that's really important, Jason, is uh, modern IT organizations have fundamentally changed in so many ways, right? The value that they're adding is no longer a cost center, but they're building the applications that are the competitive advantage of the next mm -hmm. generation as they, as physical product companies in particular become successful as digital and software entities. You know, when Mark Andreessen said software is eating the world in his publication in the Wall Street Journal in 2010, I think it's been 13 years now, people didn't know how prescient that was. It is real and happening. And so many things underneath that are important. You know, let's just take one. The idea in IT of going from a project mentality to a product mentality right? The embracing in IT of going from traditional waterfall, as we've all seen, to the explosiveness of all forms of Agile, right? Whether you're a, a person who loves Agile, hates Agile, somewhere in between, doesn't make any difference. It has impacted how we think about building software, right? And more importantly, I and, and Sophie on here, we do a lot it's impacted everything in terms of physical products. At Sophion, we're dealing with companies that make candy bars, that make chemicals, et cetera, right? And they talk not about MVPs, but they talk about test and learn. 
They talk about, uh, you know, how we're going to build things and get them out to the marketplace because their iteration uh, it happens now, not in years, but in, in weeks and months. So it's yeah. the exact same things. I'll never forget at my first kickoff meeting here at Sophion, the chief innovation officer of Haines Celestial. Some of you may know Celestial Seasonings for the teas and other things, mm -hmm. but it's a huge consumer package goods organization. He said, I'm going to tell you about the book that's most impactful about innovation. And he holds up Eric Rees Lean Startup. Now, I can guarantee you that would have happened five, 10 years ago. So the impact of trends like, uh, like we're seeing are never before. And what that means for product managers is the opportunities in your careers, the opportunities to do things that are not just with software vendors, are, are, mm -hmm. uh, and the impact for you to move up multiple chains and take on uh, organizational responsibilities that drive strategy, p &L, it, it is it is bigger and better than it's ever been. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, absolutely. You know, and the, I've had so many conversations over the last few weeks, uh, just kind of right along that vein as well, where, you know, as we talked about like Home Depot and some of the and some other organizations that are taking these kind of traditional IT project based mentality and flipping it into a product focused mentality and starting to think about, you know, who's the customer? What's the job to be done here? What are we actually doing to create value in these programs? And, and we're, um, and we're seeing an increasing number of product manager, classically trained, if there is a classically trained product manager, <laughs> classically trained product managers, moving into these IT organizations and what they're experiencing is a massive career acceleration as well because as you talked about the CEO being the product manager of the company, we often talk about the product manager being the CEO of the product. The reality is the product management profession and the work that we do around innovation, discovery, uh, prioritization, business case, everything that we do is a fertile training ground for leaders of enterprise. And yeah. there's just no better on the job training than actually running a product from from cradle to grave, so to speak. Well, you know, it goes to another wonderful aspect. I know people have religious issues about the term CEO, the product and everything. And if, for those of you who uh, uh, have uh, different thoughts on that, one of the best readings on it is by a friend of mine. You may know him, Jason, is uh, Jim uh, Baradone. Uh, Jim is a longtime product management thought leader. He has a book, and I forget, the, the, I think it's called the CEO, CEO Playbook on Product Management. But he has this mm. kind of uh, distribution of rights uh, given to product managers in different organizations. And it's a great way of thinking about, hey, product managers, to our earlier conversation, have different responsibilities, definition, and rights that are associated with them. Um, but, you know, it is a great one of the reasons I think product management is so great for future leadership skills is it is essentially a cross functional uh, job. You, you know, mm -hmm. you know, it goes to the Dan Olson, uh, you know, uh, uh, all the uh, all the responsibility, none of the authority. Right. So you have mm -hmm. to lead through persuasion. You have to lead through being a leader. Right. And there will people you, you need to build trust in the trust bank account, make deposits in the mm -hmm. trust bank account to get them to buy into where you want to take the product so you can own the product but you don't own anything you don't have anyone reporting to you or you, maybe you have a handful of people that are also product people but i mean that is the essence of it and what i found as a ceo by the way it's so funny when mm -hmm. people have that argument about oh they're not really the ceo of the product i can tell you when you do have the title ceo uh you still can't be you know, there may be a few people on the far uh you know, left or right of things that can, you know, make decisions and that's it, you're hired, you're fired. But I'll tell you what, if you are not managing by persuasion, by action, by leadership, if the only way is you're telling, telling people and you think that's being a leader, well, you got it all wrong in terms of the job of CEO. So I think there is a lot more analogies and a lot more similarities, even though you have the formal authority being a CEO to being a product manager. And I think those skills are timeless uh, even if you serve for a few years as a product manager somewhere in your career. Yep. Uh, I completely agree. Thank you so much for, uh, uh, and, and that's, a, that, that's a great call out and, and a huge part of 
as you said, you know, there's kind of a religious debate around, are you really the CEO of the product? And I think there are so many people that just don't realize that while the CEO often looks at, has, has that kind of top title, you're still not operating in a vacuum. You're still not autonomous. You have a team and there's a board or there are investors and there are a lot of decisions that take collaboration and take persuasion in order to arrive at the right outcome. So, you know, uh, Bob thanks Bob so much on that. You got to serve somebody. So, you know, everybody, yep. I don't care what your title is, you know, the people that work beside you or for you, you can't just say, oh, I'll do it this way. And that's the end of it. I mean, I'm sure we've worked for some people like that, but you didn't work for them very long. And, uh, you know, and so it's much more important to um, to buy people in, communicate. And, and, and those are all gifts of a great product manager. Hey, you asked yep. earlier, Jason, let me try to answer your question. You asked about some of these trends. And let yeah. me talk about this trend that I see of corporate innovation meeting product management. And it goes to the heart of some of these things we talked about with particularly IT organizations transforming from this, you know, uh, project mentality and other things. You know, one of the things I think that, you know, I've seen here at Sophion and, and certainly have seen uh, particularly over this last 10, 12 years is that, you know, innovation I like to look at today, innovation is product management, you know, at their core, yeah. Why are they similar? Because they're both about creating value for customers and the organization. So in their essence, in, in, in the essence, they are inextricably linked, right? They're about customer centricity. Uh, their methods, you know, in terms of uh, cross-functional collaboration, as I mentioned, and continuous improvement, iteration, that is the method that we're using today. Um, mm -hmm. They are both driven by risk management. You know, innovation carries the inherent risk of time and resources to unproven ideas and product management is talking about minimizing risks and products that meet customer expectations. Mm -hmm. But one of the most interesting trends that you see this, even if you aren't drinking the Kool-Aid I'm talking about, I will, su I suggest to you that there is evidence all around us. And I'm gonna pick on some products and some frameworks and some other things. And one of the things I found interesting in my time here at Sophion is, we are pretty much about physical products, but there isn't a customer we have that doesn't have a digital side of those products, whether it's right. e-commerce motion or actual uh, uh, digitalization of the product itself. I can guarantee you there isn't a customer of mine, and we have some pretty large customers. We have people like Hershey's and BASF and 3M and Cavestro, so some pretty big name brand com companies. There's one customer that doesn't have Atlassian's Jira. Now, yep. isn't that interesting? Now, we all know the history of Jira. You know, issue tracking for software. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yep. How did that make it into people that make chemical? <laughs> How did that make it into people that make Reese's candy bars, right? Yep. I mean, so it shows you that somebody brought that tool into that environment and made that change. You know, so mm -hmm. that is happening out there. You see, as I talked about earlier, the embracing of agile. There isn't a customer I, I talk to that says, I, you know, I want to move to safe, or I, you know, I don't want to get into whether safe is greater. <laughs> could be, That's could a be, whole different want, topic. Whatever you want it to be. Yep. It but, you know, they're yep. using Scrum or they're using Kanban or they're using something, right? And, uh, you know, and, and the other thing is all these companies are using some type of road mapping tool. Right, they're using AHA or they're using some type of workflow automation like Monday.com or Smartsheets or whatever, and um, and find you know so 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 the frameworks are there, the tools are there as they hire software people into their organization. What do you think happens? They bring their frameworks, they bring their tools, they bring their culture, they bring mm -hmm. all those things, and it's fundamentally expanding and disrupting these traditional businesses. It's been happening, I, you know, I, I'm probably seeing more of it in the seat I'm in, right? Mm -hmm. but it's been happening for years and it is a great thing for product managers, along with what we talked about earlier, that mindset from going from project to product. Uh, it, it, yeah. it, these are huge sea changes that are happening in these marketplaces. They really are. And I, I know that, um, the work that you've been doing at Sophion, you're not just getting visibility into these kind of changes. Sophion has been actually doing a lot of work to help support and even drive this evolution and this kind of convergence. Tell us a little bit about what Sophion's been up to. 
Yeah, so you know, we started out uh, as a traditional phase gate uh, mm -hmm. or stage gate type of product and automating uh, Bob Cooper's workflow, uh, making mm -hmm. better decisions. And as much as people may look at that even today as, ooh, that's waterfall, or ooh, my God, you can't be, why don't you make a gated process? You know, <laughs> hey, by the way, we're all at some point, even in our most agile of, uh, of process, at some point, we're making a decision. We're making a decision that's a go, no go at some phase based on some criteria uh, of some product. Maybe it was a project in the past, but that world still takes place. And it's not a bad mm -hmm. thing because we're being yep. intellectually honest with ourselves about making a decision that impacts our business. Right. But, you know, yep. we, we have become very much uh, with our flagship product accolade. We have become agnostic to any methodology that you're working on. But one of the things that we've added is we've embraced this idea of product managers and other corporate innovators uh, that are working together. And we've added various tools. Uh, for instance, you know, we're all we all start. I see you're going to be talking about one of my favorite subjects, which is feature prioritization. And one of the things I have a beef about is. You know, as the Agile Manifesto became uh, de facto during 2001, we, we had a generation of people who I like to call just, and other people do too, uh, as backlog groomers, right? They're, they're just uh, feature pickers. And that's not my idea of a great product manager, right? A great product manager has a lot more teeth and, uh, and a lot more business chops than that. Um, but, you know, we have embraced this idea of managing your feature input uh, from your customers and internal constituents and stakeholders. Uh, and it's also with idea management for new products. So idea management mm -hmm. and ideation, more as product discovery, uh, is really an area that is just blowing up. I mean, Atlassian brought out a product in this area. AHA brought out a product in this area. So we're not alone, mm -hmm. but you can see the growth of this managing ideas, managing discovery, managing features. This is a huge area of importance to be able to not only get them, prioritize them to your point in terms of methodology, but to track them and give feedback to the stakeholders. We've also brought out products specifically for managing product management. I mean, today's world of product managers, we ask the people online there, they may have a tool like AHA or they may be forced to use JIRA. I say that in all jest. They may be forced <laughs> to but do they really have a tool for themselves? Can they answer the health? What's the health of their product at any time without having to run around to 16 Word docs and 14 PowerPoints and 23 spreadsheets? You know, whatever your favorite tool is to kind of answer that question. So you need a tool that's made for product managers to live in. And we, we brought out that too. And finally, we're not uh, uh, immune to the idea that even though we're managing as products, there is importance of thinking about projects and work breakdown structures and tasks and things. So in addition to integrating the third party project management tools for those that want a tightly integrated functionality, we brought that up too. So we brought out this whole suite of products that manages the whole uh, idea to commercialization for corporate innovators and product managers, whether you're doing physical products, digital products or hybrid products, that's been the transformation journey that we've been on for the last three years. Well, and it, and it has certainly uh, delivered a ton of value. Uh, and, and I don't know if uh, uh, I don't know if we've got a whole lot of time, but if there are any questions out there in the audience that you'd like to ask, um, please feel free to throw them in here for the next couple of minutes. Uh, but I know I, I also dropped a, a, there's a QR code in the upper left hand corner of your screen, as well as a URL on the bottom of your screen. If you go to uh, acclaimproducts.io or scan that code, you can get a look at uh, one of the great applications that uh, Sophia rolled out. It was I think it was late last year that you started rolling it out. Is that right, Greg? That is correct. So in September, October last year, uh, we really started to launch a whole new line of products and re reinvigorated much of our product line. So, you know, a little, little bit of uh, promotion for Sophion as you get a chance. And Sophion is S-O-P-H-E-O-N. Uh, by the way, it means in Greek, house of knowledge. So mm -hmm. there you go. So there's, there's, there's your factoid for today, Jason. <laughs> yep, there you go. Love it. Love it. Uh, by the way, I see some people saying, hey, yeah, H2P is hell to pit. Hell to pit, everybody out there. Yeah, we I mean, got yeah, Andrew out there. there. Yep. <laughs> Awesome. It is so uh, it, um, this is this has been a lot of fun. We've only got a couple minutes left um, here uh, here at lunch. We got to make sure that folks have plenty of time to take a break and get back to their uh, get, get back to their role. But I'm looking to see if I have any questions that we haven't touched on yet. 
By the way, Lisa, um, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, that 10 steps to implementing B2B product management, the CEO playbook. I can't, um, it, it is a very short read, but a very packed of information. It's by Jim Baradon, who I mentioned earlier. It is a great book. It's kind of a timeless book about the fundamentals of product management, how to think about it. But the uh, distribution and rights and roles is uh, there's mm -hmm. a diagram of that in there. And if you're ever talking to someone in your organization that doesn't quite get like, well, where does product management fit? And what are they what are the decisions they make? And what is their decision rights? I can't uh, encourage you enough to take a look at that. So thank you, Lisa, for um, um, for doing that uh, and, and putting posting it up there. Are there questions? We have other questions. I agree with you. Backlog groomer is not a product manager. Thank you, Devin. It isn't. Please, please. You know, we don't need feature pickers. We need people that are driving outcomes and business results that create value for customers. That's what we need. Yep. And, and Jake, we've got uh, that, uh, that that book is at the bottom of your screen right now. It is the 10 steps to implementing B2B product management. So uh, and uh, there is you can type it out. We'll also drop that link into the chat here as well so that you can uh, um, so you can just click but, a link instead of having way, to type it out. If we're if we're promoting books here. Uh, it's someone uh -huh. to put in my own book, which is Start Your Startup Right. <laughs> you can catch my book probably for 99 cents on Amazon. <laughs> I think I think we can probably make that happen here. Let's uh, just kind of like multitask here for a minute. And we'll talk about while I'm pulling up and throwing your book in the chat as well. I want to I will also uh, let folks know about a couple of things that we've got coming up uh, with product copy. If you are in Atlanta physically in Atlanta or want to come to Atlanta on November 14th, we are having our second AI forum. And this is the impact of AI in marketing and product marketing. We got a great line of, speak, uh, uh, of speakers coming from companies like Cogbias, 352, even Sprite and Coca-Cola to talk about how this evolution of generative AI and this mass availability of gener generative AI is really driving a lot of new opportunities and changes in how Go to market is being executed across the board. We're at the very front end of that. And if you're an executive or a leading contributor in product management, product marketing, uh, product marketing management, we would love to have you join us in Atlanta for the forum. We're doing a flash sale until one o'clock. These tickets are $350 a seat. You can sit down and join this group for $99 if you uh, grab that uh, QR code at the top left of your screen uh, right now and and lock that in. That that price will go away at one o'clock this afternoon uh, Eastern time. And then we've also got coming up, uh, speaking of innovation and product management, we've got the 60 second business case workshop coming this uh, Friday, the 17th. That's $199. It is included if you're a product coffee premium member, you can go to productcoffee.com and find out about that. But if you just want to buy a ticket, we can give you a, a, a quick discount on that right now, 20% off if you book today, $160 for that, uh, for that 60 second business case, strategic prioritization for product leaders workshop. Would love to have you join us there. So as we kind of wrap up, let's see if we got any further questions down here in the chat. We got a lot of check-ins from all over the place. Uh, Luke wanted to know, uh, do, you, do you see product management as beginning to have a seat or expanding its reputation more often in the boardroom, Greg? I do. And uh, I think it goes to your earlier comment, Jason, which is, you know, it's only was 20 years ago, which may seem like a lifetime, but it wasn't that long ago where the VP of marketing owned product management, product marketing, marketing communications, and maybe, you know, partnerships and alliances. And today mm -hmm. separated that with an executive at the seat. Uh, executive role, uh, uh, you know, people would never merge those two today, and they think of them as separate and important functionalities and distinct from engineering and development. So um, I think that was an important breakthrough in terms of how we think about product. And just like probably disciplines like cybersecurity before, where, you know, they were kind of in the background, now you have this understanding of the importance of product. I think it's why you see the um, visual road mapping tool marketplace developed so rapidly because it's a communications vehicle, you know, it, 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 and that's when they started it, it, as a communication vehicle to say, where are we going? What's our strategy? What are we investing in? Why? What is that going to get us? 
And I think mm -hmm. you hear more and more and more of that. And so it is in the boardroom. It's not, you know, evenly across every company. Some are more product oriented than others. But I think you are seeing that because of the awareness and spend in this area and the uh, visibility in the executive suite, you're hearing much more about it separately in the boardroom. How's that for you, uh, Luke? <laughs> answer your question for you. Uh, and, and we'll keep going. If, uh, I think you've got a couple more minutes if uh, anybody has any follow on questions. But I'm also right now throwing a link to your book up there. Oh, we'll see if you turn that into a QR code. <laughs> we'll turn that into a QR code here real quick as well. Um, <laughs> it's a great read. I say so myself. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I actually am looking if you have a Kindle Unlimited subscription. You can actually get that for free on Kindle Unlimited, um, and you've also and you've also got a paperback version out there. It's only ten bucks, so that's that's great. Uh, I just dropped a QR code in the upper left hand corner of your screen, so you don't have to type out the Amazon link. By the way, that's one other thing that I think should it, it bears really noting. Organizations like Jason runs here in these kind of sessions and all these events that he's been promoting throughout here. You know, these types of things didn't happen not that long ago. It's and true. there are not only these, do it, just like I talked about the product management degree, but there are some great conferences, trade shows, uh, meeting organizations, online venue, uh, whatever it is, where you can actually, you know, meet other people in product management, exchange ideas, whereas years ago there might have been, you know, one or two, and that was it, that was all you're stuck with. I mean, you think about events like just what we're having here today. What a great opportunity to talk to people and get up to speed and, and create your own network and learn so much more about the profession you're in. Yep, it, it really has been an evolution. And I like to say, you know, we've kind of built this profession together as a community. And that's why having a community around product management is so important. That's what we do at Product Coffee is we create a space for product managers who have been through an experience before to help those who haven't been through it yet, who are facing it for the first time. Uh, and, uh, and we create these weekly programs every single Wednesday morning to bring a bunch of product people together just to learn from each other and to elevate their their own impact in their craft. And, uh, and you've been a great part of this community. And we want to thank you for all the innovative work that you have done over the years and, uh, and especially over the last couple of years as you kind of come alongside Product Coffee to, uh, uh, to continue to kind of help that community grow. So thanks for being here, Greg. And thank you for the opportunity to be a part of your journey. It's been very rewarding. Well, thank you. Uh, yeah, it's been fantastic. And uh, uh, Jake, you, Jake is asking if Greg is in the product copy Slack. And yes, he is. Uh, so uh, the product copy Slack, if you're not familiar, uh, in addition to our free programming, we have a premium membership that uh, that gets you access to 12 professional development workshops every year, as well as a whole bunch of other benefits. And uh, Greg is in there with us and uh, jumps in the community from time to time to provide his wisdom on questions that people are asking and just kind of help out and be part of that as well. So uh, thanks. Thanks so much for being a part of it. I really appreciate it. Yeah, it's, yeah. It, it's by the way, it's another great venue. It's one of those things that, you know, when you sit on those meetings in the morning, and you're talking to other people and listening and learning, uh, you know, that, what's great about here's one last thing I'll share. One of the reasons why after all these years of being a product manager, it still excites me every day. It's still a wonderful thing to get up in the morning because it is so challenging to be a good product manager and it is always changing and you never quite master it you never quite get ahead of it and so you're always having to learn and listen to others you're always having to figure out what's next and to me mm -hmm. that's part of the excitement of being a product manager that's part of the fun it really is and, and no more versatile position that i've ever I've ever held in my in my entire career in the product management because you touch so many different places in the business and there's constantly something new. If you're ADHD or if you get <laughs> bored easily, product management is the place to be because you will keep yourself moving. <laughs> it, it doesn't lack for variety. That's for sure. No, it does not. <laughs> 
All right. Well, I want to let I want to let you get back. I know you've got uh, uh, the Sofian uh, conferences coming up this week. I know you're a busy man. We and, and you've had a lot of exciting announcements over the last uh, couple of weeks as well. So yeah. uh, I know you got a lot on your plate. We're going to let you get out of here. But uh, really appreciate everybody who showed up today. Thanks for being a part of this. And we will see you next time. And hope to see you on Wednesday morning at uh, Product Coffee for our session with uh, Jerry Odenwelder. Let me. Uh, turn Greg off here. There we go. Uh, on communicating priorities, uh, uh, when the how really matters, you can go to productcoffee.com and find out about that and sign up as well. So thank you so much for being here and we will see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you so much, everybody. Nice to, nice to hear you, hear you see you. <laughs> Thanks, yep. See you, Greg. Bye.